Welcome back to Comic Vantage. So today's video, we're going to revisit one that I just tried a week or so ago, and that is our comic mailbag. So what I did was I just you know collected up everything that I bought the last couple weeks in the mail, and I'm going to do a quick unboxing and show you what kind of stuff I like to buy. Now, uh, I have mentioned this before, that a lot of times when I buy comics, I look for several different things. I look for low print runs, I look for... Uh, Variants. I look for storylines, and I look for stuff to get or stuff to get signed, and that's a majority of what two days comic books are going to be. I believe they're actually still all unopened, so I'm not quite sure what all I got in there. And some of those I ordered weeks ago uh, because they came out of the country. And actually, that's, a, that's another thing when you're buying comic books. Uh, don't be afraid to look outside your comfort zone. You know, check outside the country. It might take a little bit longer to get here, but if you're not in a rush, you could save a lot of money buying out of the country. So, uh, so let's see what we got. Here is my handy dandy stack. It's a nice selection there. I've got my trusty opening tools. So let's get to work and see what I got. First up, we have a do not bend <laughs> and a fragile. Find out what's in here. Cardboard. Just what everybody wants. Cardboard. All right, right. Well packed, which is always very nice. Although it can be a pain in the butt. I love this little tool. It's like a hardcore letter opener. All right. What else we got in here? More tape. Okay, hey, that took off my tape for the bag. So, let's find out what this is. First, let's replace the tape. Hey, it's a Wonder Woman number one, the Frank Cho cover. Wow, that thing's in great shape. Extremely happy with that. That is very cool. You know, I love the way Frank Cho draws his women. They're, well, Amazonian. They're always big, they're always muscular. They're not these skinny little waifs with the tiny freaking waist that they used to draw back in the 90s where you couldn't even see, you know, if they had any kind of internal organs and their waists were so small. Yeah, this is actually awesome. I'm really digging this. The, uh, you know, rumor mill is that Frank Cho's coming to my town, so I'm getting ready. And this is a cool cover anyway, just to have. And this is actually a series I have not read yet either. It's one of the few rebirths that I haven't given a try, so I might, you know, crack that open and give it a read. Alright, cool. Let's see what's in here next. Next we got a nice big one. Alright. Oh, and of course they have the pull tabs taped over. Alright, well, I can feel where the cardboard is at inside, so I know I'm not going to cut into it. Wow, that's a lot of cardboard in there. This thing is really well packed. I have no idea what this is. That's a nice selection of cardboard. You know, if they had mailed it in this by itself, I would have been rather upset. Wow, look at that stack of cardboard in there. This thing is really well protected. So I am very happy with that. More cardboard. And then, the book. I notice a trend, too, that a lot of sellers will actually tape it in here face and down for an extra little layer of protection. I don't know how much that actually helps, but it's cool. Okay, I think I'm just going to cut this thing out of here because this bag is really large for it, so I'm going to end up rebagging this anyway. Way too much material, plastic all the way around. This thing is just sliding around in here. And actually, I think I might have another bag handy right away. Oh, 
Okay, actually that's nice. Astonishing X-Men number two, the Stegman cover. I'm really digging Ryan Stegman's artwork. I like it a lot. And how the hell? Wow, I have no idea how they did this. It's like a Silver Age bag with a... Oh, never mind. It's double bag. So they put this modern one inside of a Silver Age. But hey, I don't need to rebag that. So that's cool. Yeah, that's really neat. I like Stegman's artwork. It's really grown on me. Nice. Alright, next up, padded envelope, although oh, I can fill some hardcore uh, cardboard in there as well. You know, I don't know why a lot of these sellers just don't invest in Gemini or another type of uh, comic book mailing boxes. I mean, you're going to spend, spend the same amount of money that you do with this, so you might as well. And with these... And this is, in particular, one of those mailing boxes. You know, it's really nice and protected in there. I mean, the only way this is going to get bent is if it gets really abused by the post office. And uh, it'll fit anywhere from 1 to, I, don't know, I think it's 10 or 12 comic books. Because there's actually different perforations inside to fold it differently. I love these things. I actually buy these for myself when I ship. Alright, so let's see what we got in here. Cardboard. nice and loose in there. Oh, hey. A little risque. We have the Frank Cho Cami Virgin cover. This is from JJ Comics. This is their retailer exclusive that they have picked up. Now, I've been I don't I've been hearing some things lately that retailer exclusives are actually kind of bad for the industry. Um, just because, you know, the money is not going anywhere it's supposed to. I don't know. It was a little and I read an article that was just a little convoluted. I, I did understand, like for example, they're talking about some of the creators uh, who you know order a hundred thousand issues so that way they can get their own retailer exclusives. Now this one here, I do want to put another bag and board. That looks a little loose and this corners kind of nicked. You know, for example, uh, the new Cable 150 that's coming out. I believe they're, I don't know, Rob Liefeld has two or three exclusive covers. Um, but the thing is, is that you can't buy them normally. And you actually have to order them through robliefeld.com. Now, granted, I mean, the money's going to him. But I, the argument on the other side is that the money isn't going to the retailers who actually need it to keep their businesses open. That the selling of these retailer incentive covers can actually keep a store open, you know, for another few months or whatever it is. I know it's, it's not easy being a comic book retailer, especially if you have a brick and mortar store. Uh, so I don't know which way to fall on this. I, I can see comic book stores doing it to boost their business, but when you have the actual creators, I don't know. I mean, like I said, a lot of them, they make their own money anyway, right away off of, you know, going to like Rob Liefeld charges huge, huge amounts of money to sign like first pairs of Deadpool comics. And then even more if you want to get it CGC'd. And it's a little ridiculous. You know, this comic book's not in bad shape. I mean, the corners are a little crunched, but I don't think it's anything a good pressing wouldn't take out. Oh, that's nice. So I like that. Oh, and if you don't know, this is actually like a, uh, a cover swipe of that infamous Spider-Woman cover that Minara did, where she's in the impossible pose with her ass sticking up in a huge crack, and, you know, it's kind of interesting. But this is cool. I like it. Alright, so nice. Let's see. Our next one, we have a gray envelope. Lots of cardboard. Safe to come to. Come on. <clears throat> All right. 
safety cutter do? So I better use my little safety cutter. Alright, so let's see. Another Stegman cover. This is a Rasputin number no. one Stegman variant. It's an awesome cover. Man, I love this. Look at the amount of detail on that beard. Tons of little individual hairs. Yeah, Stegman is a really good artist. I like his stuff a lot. Although I do not like this bag of board. Well, I mean, I like the bag, I don't like the board so much. board looks a little dirty for some reason. I don't know why. Yes, I am kind of picky. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Must be just a bad board. Bad board. Bad. I'll get around one day to making a video on how I store and protect my comic books. And with that one, I will go into detail on the bags and boards that I use. All right, much better. Nice and pretty. Beautiful. I like that. I hate self-sealing bags. God, I hate these things. I know, some people love them, some people hate them. You know, whatever. I hate them. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. Next, I'm actually going to save this mailer. Still in really good shape. I can totally reuse it. Yeah, you know, and the other thing is, I know a lot of people will complain that these mailers can get kind of pricey, uh, but this company Gemini will actually sell them on eBay sometimes, and they will sell nick and ding variations. Like you know, they might have a dent in the corner or a wrinkle here, but nothing that affects the uh, the mailing at all or the folding of it. And they usually sell them for like half their price. So yeah, I keep an eye out for that. Anyway, what was in this one? Oh, hey, the Frank Cho cover of uh, Reborn number one. Now I know people probably seen this in my video reviews if you watch my uh, uh, my weekly roundups. I loved this series. It was a lot of fun. It ended way too quick, but you know, I can say that for most of Mark Miller's stories. They just seem to kind of rush through them. Oh, this is another one that the bag and board just seem way too big. I don't know. It's, I've been noticing a lot lately. It's like a trend to buy Silver Age bags and boards and stick your comics in them for some reason. I don't know. I just feel like they bounce around in there too much and you risk damage. I prefer a nice tight fit. You know, the bonus thing with a nice tight fit is, is that if you have a book that has a little crease in it, stick another backing board on top, grab a, a stack of really heavy books, Leave it sit for a few months. You'll be surprised at the the the, uh, the effect that it has on it. All right, let's see. Oh, anyway, yeah, awesome book. Love this cover, and it's a great story too, which is even better. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Next, hey, Pop Culture Emporium. So you can tell that's where I got this from. <laughs> that's a cool little sticker. Right, let's give a little shout out to their company. In Anaheim, California. And that is where I picked up another Stegman cover. Of Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, number two. And anybody who's watched my re weekly review videos knows I love this story. Wow, it's so much fun. I'm having a blast with it. Wow, they really went all out. This is a nice, thick bag and board. This is not cheap. Wow, good stuff. Anyway, awesome cover again. I really, I had no idea this was out. This is really, really cool. Happy I got that. Okay, let's see now let's, what's in the box.
Oh, I know what's in the box because they wrote on the top what is in the box. <laughs> okay. Awesome. This is my Infinity Crusade, number one. Wow, that's really cool. I've actually never read, I've never read any of the Infinity anythings. So, I don't know, call me a blasphemer or something. Let's see. Wow, that is gorgeous. Man, the 90s were awesome for these crazy covers. Gold and silver and everything else you can possibly imagine. You know, if you went, if you go to Chaos Comics, they had stuff like all leather cover covers and they had velvet and all kinds of premium covers. Yeah, this is actually the reason why I picked this up. Jim Starlin, writer, penciler, Ron Lim. And these two guys, I'm hoping, are both coming to Vegas. I want them both to sign this. That would be so cool. Actually, that little bag and board's a little old. I'm going to grab a new one. As you can probably tell, I'm a little picky about my bags and boards. and I don't know. To me, if it's not perfect, I don't want it in there. There we go. Brand new home. Awesome. Okay, now we get to some of the fun ones. Let's see. What are you? You are a lot... This actually came out of country. This came from the UK. I feel a lot of styrofoam and awesomeness. Okay, here we go. I'm just pull this out. Hopefully it's not. Nope, I think it's taped in there. Yay, of course. those are. These Ah, oh, come on. So much tape, so little time. There we go. And Gen 13 Ash Can number one. Look at that. Wow, these things are awesome shape you know and like I was saying before do not be afraid to look outside the country check the seller's feedback make sure they're good to go if they are don't be afraid to buy it especially if you don't have it you need to have it like right away it'll take a few weeks especially from the UK to get something like this this book in the US sells for about 80 bucks not one but two for a quarter of that price. I kid you not, a quarter of that price. You know, this would be $160 for both of these if I bought them in the US. I think I paid like 40 bucks total for both. $20 a piece. Look at that. I mean, you cannot beat this. That's amazing. All right, next, another one that came from the UK. Alright, cardboard, and let's see what we got, we got tape, that's what we have, lots and lots of stinking tape, comic book circus, alright, let's give a little shout out to comic book circus where I got this book from stores.ebay.co.uk forward slash comic book circus thank you for shopping with comic book service we guarantee quality and fast delivery all right and actually this was a pretty fast delivery time like i said from the uk it took about two weeks so i cannot complain about that what are you okay Come on, you can do this. Tape and cardboard is not smarter than you. And this is an 
Evil Learning number zero, Platinum. Amazing. This is so cool. This is actually one of those books I picked up for the Greg Capullo signing. That's coming up in December. It's funny, a lot of people don't realize how underground Greg Capullo was before he started doing uh, X-Force, I believe, over in Marvel. And then, you know, Todd McFarlane snatched him up. And now he's doing Batman. I mean, those are really the three big titles he's, he's ever done. And before that, it's always been a little indie stuff. You know, and this was just a cover. Uh, it wasn't even anything spectacular. He didn't do like a run, unlike, you know, Gore Shriek that I picked up. I think I showed you last time around. And again, bag and board, way too big. So let's get a new one. Yeah, and the cover's not in bad shape. It was supposed to be a little bit better, I thought. But hey, I can't complain. Like I said, a whole lot cheaper. And that's another one that I probably got for like a quarter of the price out of the UK compared to what it sells for here in the US. And this will get signed and then CGC'd. All right, last but not least, from our friends in Denver, Colorado, Mile High Comics. Now I know lately, actually not lately, but during the summer there was some a little controversy going on with Mile High Comics, how they've decided to pull out of the San Diego Comic-Con. I mean, it's, it's the first time in, what, 40 years that there was no Mile High Comics at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, you know, and their whole reasoning behind it was they, they cited rising cost of the booth. I think it cost them like almost $20,000 for the booth. And then the changing demographics of people that are actually going to these cons now. And just no one spending money. You know, every t people that go to San Diego now, they go there for the celebrities and the video games and the new movie trailers and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, no one is buying comic books. They actually showed pictures of their booth on a Saturday, which was supposed to be the busiest day, and there were like three people in the booth. It was ridiculous. It's actually kind of scary. You know, and that's why I love these uh, amazing cons that travel around the country. They... Uh, I know they recently they closed down their Phoenix one to focus on some of the ones that actually are really, really doing well. And that is uh, Las Vegas and Hawaii. I think, you know, last year they actually had two in Hawaii. It was doing so well. Uh, but those cons really focus on the creators. You're not going to find movies. You're not going to find a lot of pop culture. But they really focus on comic books and the creators and the writers and the artists. And their lineup every year is always so amazing. And it's always comic book, or not always, but it's, you know, a majority comic book related. You know, this last year, uh, they had a couple big celebrities, like they had Burt Ward. Um, Adam West actually died right before this show happened. He didn't get to show up. And they had Peter Mayhew and Ray Parks. Um, but other than that, it was all comic book artists. There, there was another con I went to early last year. And you walk around the place, and all it is is a bunch of washed up actors charging way too much for an autograph. And it's, I understand a lot of them make their bread and butter that way, but I don't know, it's just, that's not for me. I want to focus on the comic books, it's what I like. Anyway, focusing on the comic book. Now, this is what I just got from Mile High. Gen 13, number one, newsstand edition. That's right, newsstand edition. Uh, there, you know, it was rumored for such a long time that, uh, Image Comics didn't even make new stand editions. It was all direct, right to the retailers, because these things were so non-existent. You could not find them. The print run on these things is so ridiculously low. Uh, I believe CGC actually marks them, or you know, actually tags them as a variant cover, not even a new stand edition, because of how low of a print run they are on these. So every year, my comic book store, local comic book store, is going to get Jim Lee and J. Scott Campbell in. And I bought this specifically for them to sign. This is amazing. I love this to death. So cool. Right, looks like we've got something on the cover there. So let's take a look and see what we got. Oh, that's actually on the bag. All right. Well, it's not on the cover. All right, so that's my mailbag for this week. Uh, my local store did just announce that they are getting uh, Donny Cates. If you don't know who that is, he's an incredible writer. 
Uh, he wrote God Country over at Image. He uh, wrote Rednecks over at Image as well. Currently, he's writing uh, Baby Teeth at Aftershock, which if you've been reading or watching my review, you know I love Baby Teeth. It's an unbelievably good story. I'm having a lot of fun with that. And uh, they also announced uh, Mark Brooks. And I'm sure everyone who's in the comic books right now knows who Mark Brooks is because he's doing all of those really cool, realistic kind of painted covers for the Secret Empire series. Yeah, so I'm actually looking forward to those two guys. I mean, they're going to have some more books coming in, so I'll have another one of these videos coming up soon. Uh, anyway, this is my mailbag for the week. If you like these kind of videos, make sure you know you leave me a thumbs up. Uh, give me a comment down below. Let me know how I'm doing. Uh, a lot of people have been giving me little ideas and videos to make, so I'm going to be following a bunch of those. And uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon up there or, you know, down over there to uh, get all my updates and all my notifications. I try to put out a couple videos a week, so there's lots of good stuff coming. And for all my current subscribers, hey, thanks. Welcome back. And, uh, you know, also, leave me a thumbs up. Actually, you know, my, my likes and my shares have been down this week, people. My analytics have told me my shares are down. Make sure you share this. Share, share, share. Put it on Facebook. Put it on Twitter. Put it on Google+. Plus. You know, stick it everywhere you possibly can. Make a mass email. You know, spam everyone in the world. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah. Thank you for watching, and take it easy.